1988 and Namco proudly shown the world first system that was able to handle the polygon 3D graphics. It was a beginning of new era in gaming. Early years were mainly filled with various simulators. The first game released on System 21 was Winning Run, which soon was followed by a sequel and another racing game called Driver's Eyes. Namco also used the popularity of its classic hit Galaxian by taking fighting with Alien Invasion to third dimension. And then someone figured out that maybe it's a cool idea to give players a chance to fly with F-16, which was super popular back then thanks to the Top Gun movie. So in 1992 an air combat arcade machine stylized for a fighter cockpit was presented to the world. Dynamic gameplay, fast replays and great sound effects given players a chance to become Maverick for a few minutes, but it was only a plotless draft of a game that was released on PlayStation in 1995. In this case, the plot was also limited to a few lines of introduction, but the game offered 16 various planes to choose from like F4 Phantom, Su-27 and the famous Stealth. Players also had to deal with some economical aspects as they were put in a position of a mercenary that earns money for accomplishing missions. The cash can be spent on planes, weapons or even hiring a wingman to help us in combat. There was also a two-player duel mode and we could choose the third-person view perspective that was not something new in the genre, but when everybody else was trying to go as real as possible, Namco just wanted us to have a fun arcade game. One month after the PS1 release, Namco presented the Air Combat 22 arcade machine. The 22 number was referring to the new Super System 22 machine that was able to process high-resolution textures. It was the last game released on arcade cabinet. From this point, the series changed its name to Ace Combat and will stick to the home systems. And on those, players expected at least a few hours of solid gameplay, so they had to put more effort into storytelling. In Ace Combat 2, Namco introduced their new universe based on a conflict between UCN and OCN continents. The protagonist is a part of a mercenary squadron called Scarface, which is hired by UCNs mainly to destroy enemy military targets and sabotage their plans of attack. Players were also given a variety of super planes to buy and a non-linear plot with various endings depending on decisions we made earlier on. Ace Combat 2 was recepted very well, instantly becoming a classic and taking its place in the PlayStation Hall of Fame for years to come. One more time Namco find a way to successfully port an arcade hit to home systems and they were ready for more. Ace Combat 3 Electrosphere was released in 1999 on two CDs that included 56 missions, a lot of anime cutscenes, non-linear plot with six different endings, huge encyclopedia of planes and weapons and of course better graphics than ever. Unfortunately, it was only a big fat Japanese release. The rest of the world not only had to wait till the first quarter of the year 2000, but also received only one CD with 36 missions and no one in cutscenes to cherish the great plot. Critics went insane that unofficially the decision was made due to the lower than expected sales in Japan. Also, PlayStation 2 premiere was happening in a few months and Namco probably was focusing more on the upcoming title for the next-gen console. Ace Combat 04 Shattered Skies was released in September 2001 in Japan and two months later in North America as Distant Thunder. Fans in Europe had to wait till the beginning of 2002. This time we don't fly as mercenary but still earn and spend money during the game. Of course the game improved a lot when it comes to graphics. Namco decided to lose the colorful arcade style making a little step to more realistic gameplay. Another new thing was the radio communication during the missions. Action takes place on the UCN continent after the events of Ace Combat 2. In the year 1999 the planet is threatened by Ulysses asteroid. Governments coordinated their actions and developed Stone Age rail guns in order to destroy Ulysses before it hits the planet, but parts of the asteroid still made a lot of damage on the surface, especially to Erisian people. The struggle with destruction led to a social unrest and radical right-winged party took over the power. Erisia captured Stone Age and started the occupation of continent. We play as Mobius One, an elite pilot of ISAF, alliance appointed by United UCN governments. Between the missions we get a series of flashbacks that build the ethos of Yellow 13, the legendary Erisian ace pilot. Mobius One becomes a counterweight to Yellow 13 and soon the global conflict comes to an epic duel between the two. Fourth part got great reviews and the sales reached 1 million copies in no time. It was clear that soon Namco will release another game. 
Ace Combat 5 The Unsung War came out in 2004. Players were given more than 50 planes to choose from and first time in the series we could actually lead our squadron by giving orders to wingmen. Members of the Project Aces team personally visited aircraft factories to prepare as real models as possible and while working on the game environment they used authentic satellite pictures. Graphics were outstanding and the gameplay achieved a perfect balance between arcade and simulation. This time the plot introduces us to Balkan War that began in mid-90s when Belka attacked the surrounding countries. Thanks to the Ocean government's alliance, the order was restored and Belka was put under the protectorate, but even after 15 years the situation in that region is still unstable. Player flies as a pilot serving in a military base on a small tropical island that looks a little sleepy, but soon it will be in the middle of a war zone. In 2005, Ace Combat Advance was released on Game Boy. The game was developed by an outside team Human Soft and it faced a bad reception. Critics hated every part of it and as a result, Namco decided never to release it in Japan. Last Ace Combat released on PS2 was Balkan War from 2006. The game takes us back to the genesis of Balkan conflict. It took place in mid-90s which gives player chance to have fun with some classic fighters like F-15. Ace Combat Zero was a great game, graphics were the very best PS2 had to offer and the gameplay was a fine combination of what was best in last two games. But even though the reception was good, there were also some voices of criticism pointing out a little lack of progress in the series. Namco must have took it quite seriously because 5 years will pass until we see another Ace Combat released on PlayStation Home system. But that doesn't mean there weren't any games. In late 2006, the series debuts on PSP with Ace Combat X, Skies of Deception. This time it's a fine port that sticks to the spirit of the previous PS2 games. We also get a typical Ace Combat conflict plot and some anime slideshow cutscenes similar to those in Shattered Skies, along with great graphics and 31 missions showing the war between Federal Republic of Aurelia and Lisa's forces. Nevertheless, it looks like Namco was not able to make any more progress on PS2 and in 2007, one of the most famous PlayStation series was released exclusively on Xbox 360. Graphics and action gameplay were taken to the next level and thanks to the internet connection, developers could finally expand the multiplayer modes, giving players various ways to compete and cooperate online. Ace Combat 6 Fires of Liberation has a typical plot for the series. It's about Ulysses hitting Earth and the destruction that leads to war, similar to what we saw in Shattered Skies. The game had a good reception with mostly positive reviews, but they were not as enthusiastic as in previous years. In 2009 the series makes its debut on iOS system with Ace Combat XI Skies of Incursion. Players were using their phones to steer the plane. Basically, it's a clone of Ace Combat X, but the story is told from the other perspective. August 2010, we are back on PSP with Ace Combat Joint Assault. Again, it looks very similar to Ace Combat X, but this time it's more about the multiplayer modes. Game offers the cooperative campaign with 4 players or multiplayer battles up to even 8 players. Also, for the first time, fictional continents were replaced by authentic locations like Midway Island or San Francisco. Fans were wondering, is it going to be a new trend in the series? Seventh generation consoles brought graphics to another level. Namco also made a lot of changes in the gameplay. Probably the most noticeable was Close Range Assault System, which zoomed the camera while the target was in player's range. It is said that it was supposed to eliminate the effect of shooting to a small black spots far away, which is often an issue in action games. Without any doubt, Sea Raid made the fights more dynamic, although there was some criticism from older fans who complained that it kills a typical Ace Combat climate. For the first time in history, players could also fly choppers, shoot with Black Hawk side guns or torpedo targets with AC-130. Assault Horizon also had more multiplayer modes than any other Ace Combat before. Some were already well known to the players, but we also get some fresh ones like Capital Conquest and Domination that allowed battles up to even 16 players. And yes, fictional continents were replaced with real countries and cities. The plot was a classical political fiction, but thanks to that we get to fly it over places like Dubai, Miami, Moscow or even Washington. The reception was rather good and the sales quickly went over 1 million copies, but some fans of the series complained that the game is starting to feel too much like Call of Duty in the air.
Just a few weeks later, Assault Horizon Legacy was released on Nintendo 3DS. The title is quite confusing because actually, it's a remake of Ace Combat 2 and has nothing to do with the PS3 game. Looks like Namco tried to save some money on marketing. At least outside Japan, where the game came out in January 2012 as Ace Combat 3D Cross Rumble. But let's stick to 2011 for a little while and talk about Ace Combat Northern Wings, released on mobile phones in December. It was a very simple gameplay with a view from the top, just like in Ace Combat Advance. The action takes place between Shattered Skies and Anson War. In May 2014, a free-to-play Ace Combat Infinity was released on PlayStation Network. Eight single-player missions and 39 more in multiplayer were given to players just like that. The only catch is that we can play for a limited time daily. When the fuel ends, you have to wait for a recharge. Of course, you can also buy the fuel if you want to play straight away. Infinity graphics were based on the engine from Assault Horizon, but the gameplay was cleaned from all the fireworks. It's pretty much a good old Ace Combat with modern graphics. Plot is trying to clean the mess that was made in the universe by replacing fictional countries with the real ones lately in the series. Several cutscenes explain how the impact of Ulysses' asteroid was a prelude to a global political changes that led to allies and unifications between the countries that formed the Eusea, Erusea and other new continents known from the older Ace Combats. But the reception of the game was rather poor and many voices suggested that the series is starting to bite its own tail. So it's hard to predict which way it's gonna actually go in the upcoming Ace Combat Skies Unknown planned for 2018 on PS4, Xbox One and PC. All we know is that it will support VR and the plot should continue what was started in Ace Combat 6, Fires of Liberation. And which Ace Combat is your all-time favorite? Let everyone know in the comment section and if you like the video be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe the channel for more.